And we are back. So, last we left off, the party <laughs> has found themselves finally uh, at the foot of the old city um, near the cliffs uh, above Conwich itself. Specifically, you are at the base of the former lighthouse that you guys have kind of camped towards at least once before. Uh, Trust saw some weird shit happen there. Um, it is in somewhat of a ruined state still, leaning um, slightly, still standing. Um, you're not exactly sure how old this lighthouse is. It looks, it looks ancient, um, hundreds of years old, maybe maybe older. You're not exactly sure. Uh, the architecture itself is kind of different, not not standard dynasty craft. However, you guys are up here. It is dark. You do have, I do believe, Rogar had lit a torch, um, at least so you guys at least have some light up here to help guide you, give you some discerning colors, so you're not relying on shades of gray to find tracks or find remnants of a uh, of a. But city. Zoom was relying on shades of gray. Oh shit! That's or maybe shades of black. I don't. I don't know. You know, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. <laughs> as, as we move forward, um, what are you guys doing now that you've gotten up here? How long did it take? A few, it, the equivalent of like uh, like an hour, maybe, to get yeah. from the city all the way up here. And it, it mostly because you had to go a roundabout way. Like you couldn't just make a straight path. You had to kind of do a weird, a strange walk up and around, around the actual ruins of Castle Gatebreaker, giving them a berth so as not to disturb the Crigen population in the nearby area. Did Moak ever explain what happened to his eye? Did you, Moak? Because, I mean, I don't think we ever saw him die and be resurrected. We never saw any of that. Yeah, you guys never actually saw that. Moak isn't sure of what the experience was really because you know he had been shot uh bled out and drowned um and so he you know he's got these fuzzy um impressions of uh Matt Oogville, you know there helping and uh then i come at the surface and get this weird eye you know but his eye is definitely noticeably different than it oh was yeah. yeah yeah it's, it's oh, yeah. like a it's like white like it's dead white. eye and yeah. it, tends to leak all the time. It, it does leak and it smells of the sea. It's a nice gonna, ocean spray. Mm -hmm. Ozone smell. I'm going to hand him a tissue or something. Every once in a while. <laughs> just like, just, you know, oh, yes. you might Thank you. need Thank to you. get that looked at. Well, it's, no, it's no big deal. It's fine. Surely there's no nothing to worry about. What doesn't, happened? doesn't really bother me much. When did you get that? Uh, I didn't have it before, so I guess when I came back out of the sea. Did you like hit your head, or like are you concussed? No. I don't know. I was I was unconscious. And I was very wet. I think Valerie saw him get shot, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I assumed we all knew. Did we not all know he got shot? Well, you guys all know he was. Wounded for sure, but Ukul brought him, mm -hmm. and he was just, oh, he's alive, and brought him up there. No one, no yeah. one, no one, no really, one knows, knows really knows or why. why. Technically, they no didn't one knows. Question the thigh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, okay. It apparently, doesn't know, affect his. Died. Yeah. Apparently, it's never affected his marksmanship because he's Yet. still ridiculous. Take right. that, no depth perception. Ooh. Uh, can we make out the town from where we're standing? The old town? Um, why don't somebody give me a survival roll? I'll do it. Yes, go, go ahead, Zoom. Give me a survival roll. Wait, I have one quick question. Yes, Felder. That last um, sleep we had <laughs> back at the end or whatever. You got a nat 20. Oh, Sorry. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> go ahead, Felder. That had been a long rest. Yes, yes, you guys all got a long rest. So you recover one point of exhaustion if you had any. Yes, great, beautiful. If you still, you might still have some if you went down multiple times, yeah. just throwing it out there. That was my second, that was my second long rest. Okay. So, um, all right. Natural 20. The natural 20. All right, so 
Zune as you're kind of getting the lay of the land. I'm um, assuming Rogar's probably up there, Moog as well. You're more of your, your trackers, individuals out here. And I guess what catches your eye, Zoom, it's not so much the it's not so much the current topography. You can it's almost like for just a moment you get a uh, an idea of what this place could have looked like back in its prime. And you start to see subtle indentations um, throughout where there are clearings where there's sparse vegetation where you imagine perhaps that was a house. Perhaps that was a storage building. As you're looking out there, you're starting to pick out different patches of it, just dirt, just dirt and and uh, small amounts of grass and reeds. There's actually some trees that have grown up in some of these areas. A few of the um, blossom trees, specifically the blue blossom trees that are beginning to bud at this point because it's getting winter's coming, of course. Um, have have grown up, some of them quite large, and right in the center of what probably would have been a house someday. So this is a very difficult task normally, um, but for some reason, you're just on your game soon. I don't know what it is. You're able to pick out these different focal points. And with that role, not only do you see the kind of layout of the town itself, the former town, um, you can see that there are remnants of what looked like at some point probably was a, a barrier of some kind, some kind of wall that was my, maybe built around here. Um, you do, in fact, find, uh, easily enough, you find the temple, um, maybe, I don't know, a few minutes walk away from the lighthouse that you're at. You're able to find some of the scattered stones that would have been the outside walls. You're also, Zoon, able to see that there is a, a well-tread path from uh, somewhere, somewhere towards Conwich, there's a well-tread path. You can you can see it. You can see the indentations that that goes by the lighthouse, goes north, and then it kind of fades off in the distance. Though you think you could follow it if you tried. Um, with a natural twenty, you can see that no one has walked this path recently, but it is tread enough that there is sparse vegetation. You can tell that this was this was used quite a bit, and within recent time, not like a not the distant distant past. You can also see Zune that as you guys, uh, uh, unless you're going to investigate that, do you want to investigate that, or do you want to move towards the temple? Um, I'm going to point out the tracks okay. and to everyone else. I mean, like, do they look like human? I'm sorry, do they look like people tracks, or do they look like? And we've seen some weird stuff. Does it yeah. look like it slithers? Seen... Does it crawl? Now, you're not exactly a woodsman, Zoom, even with a natural 20. I don't um, know what a footprint looks like. You would know what a footprint <laughs> looks like. But the, when I say path, I mean kind of like a game trail. I got you. It's not exactly, you know, it's not, you're not seeing footprints in the, in the sand or anything like that. It's All mostly right. just you can tell someone or something has used a path from the city from the, the current city, the new city, up here, up through the hill, and out out towards the cliffs. Oh, I don't like that. But, I mean, knowing what we know from Morag, I think I can draw a conclusion mm. from there. But okay, what do we see at the temple? Okay, as you move to the temple itself, you do see that there is, there is a small indentation ring that is not quite overgrown. Um, and it, it marks out the base of what would be a the essential the the well that's at the center of all of the temples of the well. It is covered in like moss, but you can still see bits of the stone peeking through. You're able to discern that there's a well there, and you do in fact find a part of the nearby ground that looks like. It has been recently disturbed. Um, the vegetation doesn't match. Like there's almost like a moss kind of li lichen, li lichen, 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 lichen. That's kind of grown over most of the area here, and there is none in like a, a small, like a like five by five square. It's just it's just plain patch of dirt. That is sus. 
Well, I guess I will point out this, but I'm sure everyone else can see this patch of missing dirt. So do we start digging there? Do we go to the cliffs and follow that trail? What do we want to do here, guys? Well, I thought Rogan told us we're looking for a, a hatch. Guess we found is, it. Is the hatch in a similar location to the uh, other temple? It's within the borders of what Zoom pointed out. It's within the borders of the temple. Okay. So we did not know. It's hard to tell where the entrance to the temple was, but you can probably assume that this is probably the area that they were that she was speaking of. Okay. Could it be trapped? No one does probably have some type of magical trap on it. Maybe. Check Perhaps it out. Take a look. Yeah. Lori searches for like a, a bloodied hand, you know, severed hand somewhere to throw at it. You know. <laughs> Do you actually look for a bloody man? Look at her hand. You look around. There is no bloody hand. Oh, damn. Heart sinks. You squirrel at it, you know, to see I, what happens. I'll help you find one. Enough. Yo. Small animals are sort of enough on this show. It's ridiculous. Okay. They have, they have. <laughs> um, are you guys going to attempt to dig this up? I want to look for traps first. Okay. So, um, buddy, investigation check. Murder's going to help Trist. Probably Trist. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want me to put on his monocle. Okay. Yeah, you get advantage. 23. 23. You look at the area, Trist, you can tell for sure that this is definitely disturbed ground. Um, and it looks like it was um, put in, put back in place with uh, probably shovels and something was buried here or re- reconcealed. You're not exactly sure what without digging it up. As far as a trap is concerned, you do not see anything on the surface here that would relay any kind of immediate danger. Don't suppose uh, any of y'all have any shovels? As an artist, no, I do not. I got big hands. What a good thing it would have been to buy back in town. There's shovel. I've been digging. Stop Um, digging, Moog. How long? I will say without without tools. I mean, it's doable, obviously. But I have, oh, like, it's going to be slow help? going. I have you big wanna, hands. Ten foot reach. I don't care if you have big hands. It's going to be slow going. Oh, are we? Yeah, are we, we what? The program we use is giant great sword as kind of like uh, a spade. Resorts. <laughs> you can try. You can certainly it's try. A, it's made of bone. Yeah, I'll, I'll go for it. We're by can the we lighthouse, have... right? Yes, we are by the lighthouse. Can we? Take a quick peek inside. Sure. Sure. Do you want to go towards the lighthouse? I believe it was haunted. I know. I remember. <clears throat> Do you want to go inside, Valerie? Trust you should go with her. Uh, all right. All right, let's go look for a shovel. All right. Rogar is, is starting to dig with his sword. Okay. Rogar, give me an athletics check at disadvantage because you what? don't have proper tools. All right. <laughs> that's gonna be the, that's how we're gonna do this. You can still do fantastic. Oh, sure, I did do pretty bad. Oh, yes. twenty-five. <laughs> Jeez, at disadvantage. So don't don't give me yeah. that. What? Oh my god! This yeah. is bullshit, bro. Bullshit. Yeah, twenty-five. So despite it not having decent tools, Rogar's over there using his 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 old great sword that he pulls out. Do you, now, do you keep it in the bag? Give it a bag hold on. Yeah, so you kind of yeah. big ass bone great sword. It begins to like <laughs> you know, yeah. that's, that's it begins to scoop cool it in and uh, just hu- heaving big hunks of dirt to the side. Um are as there, yes, soon? Oh, are there any um like bushes or anything anywhere where someone may have just thrown some tools? Because I mean I, I'm just imagining someone coming all the way up here and that all is that in fact a very deductive skill to take. Um you had a pretty good investigation check earlier too. Between you and Trist, this Trist worked really high too. 
um, using that train of thought. As Rogue goes over there, rawr, rawr, just just starting to heaving away. Um, I'll say that you kind of say that aloud, and you're kind of like uh, looking. And as Trist is passing by you, there is actually a small kind of bushed area um, outside of the temple itself, uh, the temple area that it's in. And sure enough, Trist, you look over there and you see a spade as well oh. as a pickaxe um, and some coils of rope. Watch them all be cursed, but okay. Look over there. <laughs> That's bullshit. <laughs> Ah, well, very. We can just go right here and grab these. Yeah. <clears throat> very well, then. Rogar's already the... like. Rogar's like. Okay. He's like a quarter done already, but in this this short time span already, he's like, oh, oh, he's just he's wailing on it. Um, so. Oh, Pull you br- spy bring up gas. spyglass. Okay. And just because I'm curious, like this haunted, scary area, maybe it will work here, even though it's worked nowhere else throughout this entire campaign. Okay. Maybe this is the place. Maybe this is the he place. He saw eat. some demon thing on top of Jade or something. Smoke did. It was What's that? Oh, that yeah, was that was Smoke. <laughs> um, you pulling the spyglass out soon? Or what are you going to look at? Well, I'd like to look at where they're digging. I'd mm-hmm. like to look around at the tower. I'd like to look toward the cliffs where Trist was like, oh my God, I saw some spooky things. We're like, okay. Okay. Um, All right. Um. Hmm. Let me ask you, Zoom. Do you want to yeah. see things? That's a good question. Do you want sure. to? Sure. No, I feel like I'm being set up to see things that aren't really there because I want Sick to see knowledge, things. yes. Okay. Um, give I'll me a perception test. All right, perception. Perception. And I don't have to take a disadvantage because we're in the dark, right? Yes. Oh, I'm very perceptive. 23. 23. All right, Zoom. Completely insane. Oh, no. no. All right, Zoom. You pull up the glass. You start looking at the area that Rogar's like, ah! Trist and and Valry have retrieved the the tools. Moog's kind of like on Overwatch. You know, he's got his crossbow out, kind of looking around. Um, You kind of glance towards them. You don't see anything in that immediate area. You go to look out towards uh, towards the cliff side. You scan the cliff side's edge. You don't see anything. Then you come to the old lighthouse. And you kind of move over to it. And as you get to the base of the lighthouse, it looks slightly different when looking through the glass. Mm. Um, it looks almost whole. As if it's relatively undamaged. You kind of look at it and you kind of take a second to focus. You move up to the lighthouse. You get to the top of the lighthouse. And there's a glow coming from the top of the lighthouse. A green glow? It is, in fact, green. Oh. Anything else? Or just, is that it? As you see the green glow emanating from the top of this house from the top of this lighthouse I shouldn't say house top of this lighthouse you see a uh, tendrils and wisps of I don't know how to say it almost like energy emanating off the top of this structure and it doesn't look like flame emanating off of it just looks like it's it's strange and unnerving in a strange way and as you're looking at it, you can't help but follow some of the tendrils and wisps. And as you do, they move you out towards the skyline. And you see flickers in the clouds just for a few moments, perhaps crashing thunder in the distance, some lightning illuminating some of the strange shapes that can be made. And as a flash appears, you see the silhouette of a massive gargantuan ship in the clouds, a sailing vessel with masts and rigging. Sweet. And you get it for just a second and it kind of <clears throat> startles you. 
and you take the spyglass away and kind of shake your head and you if you when you look up with just your plain eyes you see nothing the tower looks normal everything else mm-hmm. looks like it was before okay I'm gonna tap Trish's shoulder can you look through this and tell me if you see a ship in the sky please why not <laughs> Oh, Trist. <laughs> oh, Trist. Give me a perception test, Trist. I think Zoom got a hold of those special candles. 18. Okay. I don't know why is that showing up for me? But yes, I will take your word for it. 18. Trist and Varel. You also... Pull the glass out. Look over towards the sky that she, that Zoom previously mentioned. And as you look up, I don't see any ship. Nothing there. You move towards the tower. You do see a ring light with tendrils of strange, bizarre energy emanating from it. And as you look at it, Trist. You see in the light itself, little shapes begin to appear. Look like slits. You gonna stare? Nope. (laughs) Close back up. Close it up. As you go to close it it up, you see just the just a just a flicker of almost like a small eye opening up. Oh, as you close the spyglass. What did you see? Uh, yeah, I didn't see no ship. Uh, but uh, Ro- Bro, God, did she describe to you this this glowing rock? <laughs> Still <laughs> just <laughs> doing it. <laughs> There's a glow on top of the lighthouse, green glow, and uh, it's got little eyeballs. I, I didn't see no ship though, Zoom. I don't know. You, Zoom must be going crazy. Shit. You saw eyeballs, and I'm the one going crazy. Okay. Yeah. All right. Didn't I'm you almost walk off of a cliff earlier? Because oh, eyes everywhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, this, is, this is a similar thing. Surprisingly. I didn't see eyeballs. It's really strange. Did you see the glow? I did see the glow. There were no eyeballs, oh, well. though. Well, now we can come to an accord on that. Valerie, uh, do you want to have a look? <laughs> we say then that the eyes have it. Oh, my. But I'm you sorry. know, Anthony, you know how hard it is for me with eye shit, bro. I have to sit here and restrain myself from making all the jokes. And I know. I know. Hand, hand, the, hand the spyglass to Valerie, see if she takes it. No? Huh? I'm gonna take it. You gonna look through. Always, always get a third opinion. We're gonna, yeah, yeah, third opinion. Good. Valerie, you, you going to shit? look? Ooh. This That's is like cool. when somebody Ten? says, "This tastes terrible." Here, try it. I was like the pick. We're like the uh, the roadworks team. There's three people standing yep. around, and two <laughs> guys are yeah. digging a hole. At this point, <laughs> point Rogar's like Rogar's almost done. He's almost done digging his hole. <laughs> he's actually hit a piece of something. He's like, oh, I think I found something. And he's, he's like digging. And you're like, hold Keep digging, oh, Roga. No, he takes the spyglass, opens it, he's looking. Vilri, uh, you look towards the night sky. You don't see anything in the sky itself. But as you glance towards the tower, you do, in fact, a strange, eerie glow emanating from the top of the tower. Oh. And what's even worse, Valerie, is there are large bulbous eyes oh, yeah. floating around it, staring at you. And as you see them, you start to get locked in place, Valerie, as you're looking at them. And I need you to make a sanity check. <laughs> Since we like to tempt fate. Well. That is really bad. 
Oh, no. um, do, would you Lucky. like to use some of your luck? luck? I, yeah, I'm going to use the luck. Might as well. Let's go ahead and use it now. <laughs> oh. Uh, that's the same roll. It's impressive. What? Uh, do you have any more I'll, luck, or is that it? I do. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's go and let's blow it all. Let's get them oh, out of the yeah. way. Let's get it out of the way. Okay. Seventeen. Seventeen. You gonna go with seventeen? You good with that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. As you look into the eyes, they all begin to open up, and as they get wider and wider, they begin to encompass the sky itself as multiple eyes are opening up and a cornucopia of eyeballs is cascading from this tower, all of them opening up, looking at you, surrounding you. So you, oh, oh, and you quickly shut the spyglass and look away. And as you look up for just a moment, Velvety, you still see the eyes staring at you with the glass closed. And then you shake your head and there's nothing there. Did you see the ship? Throw the spyglass on the ground and just like <laughs> <laughs> look back at Zoon, just like, how could you do this to me? You know, but like, yeah. I it's just say. a ship. I didn't know you had a thing against ships. We just went on one. Mm. And I was like, hiss at her and like, <laughs> or him, hiss at him, and uh, say that, just talk about, start rambling about eyes and walk off. I guess you win that argument, Tris. Fine. There yeah. were eyes. Well, I have a good concern right now. It's these invisible eyes that we can't see. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, we have a spyglass. We can see them if we want to, but I think I'm fine. Yeah, I don't think any of us are going to look through that. Uh, yeah. Rogue, are you done yeah. yet? Yeah, I'd like to get out from up here. And a- Trist, you might need to go check on Belry. She looks get really good. Cool. Get to stepping. Yes, Rogar. Yeah, yeah. You were done. You were the only one who did any work. Um, <laughs> very much like. Hey, 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 I kept us all safe. Mo- okay? Moog was on Overwatch, you know? Yeah, Moog's over no. there. He's got one finger way up his nose. No, yeah. I don't. I did not. Although mm. you probably saw that terrible perception check I rolled. I did. I did <laughs> see your bad <laughs> perception <laughs> check. That's what I'm talking about. He's over there. I, I, you're welcome for that free gift, by the way. He's got these 10 inch fingers yep. up his nose. Exactly. Yeah. Way up yeah, there. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Pulls them out, whatever. Bugbears uh, have got a lot of reach. Rogar. I have finished. <laughs> Rogar fin- finishes. You've been covered a hatch. Um, almost like a like a three by three. A wooden hatch. There appears to have been at one point a some kind of locking mechanism on this hatch. However, it appears to have been broken off, sheared, in fact, uh, perhaps with implements. Um, one might say maybe a pickaxe, something like that, was used to break off the actual lock itself and remove it. going first. I'm going to pick up my spyglass and I'm not going first. Uh, Rogar will go first. Um, Rogar, after doing all the work. Yeah. <laughs> this is his pro boy. He gets to go first. You're going to lift the, you're going to lift the door. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to look at it first to see if he sees anything off with it, but other than that, he goes give, give me an uh, investigation check. Pulls that spyglass. Yeah. Hmm, getting real close to it. <sighs> um, you do see, with a 23, you do see small gravings on it that you would, you would um, associate with the Temple of Boel. Kind of like just um, standard markings. Boel. Um just used in their in some of the craftsmanship of some of the more elaborate or not so much elaborate and some of the more um, um special pieces that you've you've seen in the temple one of the more sacred objects regardless though um other than that you don't 
think there's anything amiss with it. You're able to lift the hatch and look down. There is, in fact, a um, just an empty hole. It looks like at one point there was a rope ladder, maybe, attached. You do see hooks where one would be attached, and you do see fig- fragments of rope that are frayed and broken, um, that have fallen free, and you're assuming there's something down this hole. I can't see all the way to the bottom of the torch. Uh, you grab, yeah, you take the torch and you kind of look over the side, and it looks like it goes down about 10 feet. Uh, excuse me, 15 feet. 15 feet. Okay. Uh, Rogar will tie his rope to the post or the little mm-hmm. where the remnants of the uh, rope ladder were mm-hmm. and uh, start to climb down. Okay. Rogar begins to climb down. Could I stick my head down there and use perception to see if we can hear anything and like anything other than Rogar. Okay, Rogar's going down. You're gonna, you're gonna go, go by the know, hole. Rogar, I'll go after Rogar. Rogar, I'll looks, go. Rogar looks up and is like, "What is happening?" And uh... I'll go down after Rogar okay. and use perception once I'm down there. All right, all right. So Zoon begins to climb down. Give you can give me a perception test. Um, who's after Zoon? Tristan. Trist. Then Velry. Oh. Mo. Nope. Yeah, I'll bring up the rear. Okay. It's a, a little bit taller. And... I can cover both the front and the back. Okay. So Valerie, Eleven. then Moe, and Eleven. Excellent perception testing. Um, as you, as all of you get down to the bottom, um, you do see that this tunnel, and it is in fact a tunnel. It looks like it goes further north. And it looks like it opens up into a larger space about um, 30 to 40 feet down. There is, it it doesn't appear to be uh, natural. It appears to be uh, worked stone. It's it's not excellent craftsmanship, but it does appear that this was a carved tunnel purposely. As the lot of you travel down the tunnel, Zoom, you've been rather at home in the underground tight spaces, not as uh, choking as the rest of you. Um, Once again, uh, underground in a dark, tight, cramped space. As you move down this tunnel, you get to the next area, Rogar. With your, you're using your torch to illuminate ahead of you, and you have you have decent decent headspace in here. It's actually um, rather tall. You get to the next room, and you realize it's not exactly a room. It appears to be a a circular chamber with a large, what can only be described as a large uh, dais, like a, a disc-like um, piece of metal in the center of it. All around the edges of the dais, there is black, murky water. There are small catwalks that are made out of what looks to be very um, old wood that have been built over the uh, over some of the water to to give you places to walk, um, or at least whoever used to be here, places to walk. There appear to be two more paths off of this central structure. So there are three exits from this room, one of them being the entrance you just took. There is a path to the west and then a path to the east. The dais itself is unremarkable. It appears to be maybe some kind of like iron or some some sort of metal like that. What is interesting, however, is the water itself. There is the the murky water. Um, it appears to be strangely enough. It appears to be moving up and through the sides of the tunnels, almost as if gravity was slightly odd. It wasn't flowing down, like almost like it's flowing up. If that makes sense. Yeah. Similar to the uh, temple in Port Dorona. Exactly like the temple in Port Dorona, Rogar. 
something Jim uh, was not a part they, of. Actually, no one in exactly. this party was. Everyone was dead. No. <laughs> yeah, everyone died. Uh, the, um, it's a large chamber, though, with water on yes, the sides. Yes, it's a, pre- a, a pretty yeah. good-sized chamber. Um, okay. And yet you do see the, the two paths. Um, there is the, the wood, and it, it is very much striking to the chamber that you saw beneath Portorona. We're all in this room now, or at least I'm going to assume. Yeah, you guys are guys are all at the at least the edge of the room. Uh, Rogue... I'm just going to cast detect magic at first level. Okay. As you cast detect magic, you glance outwards. There is a strange glow about just the entire like chamber, like the like everything in this room is got a slight a slight tinge of the art not necessarily the arcane but some kind of magical element and you might suspect that that is whatever is creating this um this strange gravitational anomaly it doesn't ping as any specific type no no it does not there's nothing specific yeah. um does the water look like that brackish color that the portrait water did Yes, when it, it does. Had, when it was corrupted? Mm-hmm. Okay. Very much so. Um, I visited a place like this in Port Daruna. The temple there was corrupted by some elemental. Be careful. Not stray too close to the water. Um... And start pushing in, I guess. Okay. There are two paths ahead of you. One to the west, one to the east. Um, okay. Are you moving into the center dais area? Yeah. Okay. You step across the moist planks that don't even creak under your foot. They kind of mush in slightly. Um, as if much of the catwalks in the area are probably somewhat rotten. As you walk over them, Rogar, your 400 pound weight. They do not give way. And you're able to cross onto the center dais, no problem. Um, the rest of you shortly afterwards cross over, except for Moog, because I hate him. He falls into the water and drowns. Oh, no! But all of you are able to cross <laughs> over Rude. into the center dais. <laughs> you're all able to cross over to the center dais area. Um, you have the two other paths at your disposal. Um, feel free to ask questions to determine the course you'd like to take. Does it look like there's something held on the dais or anything? Or No, oddly enough, it just looks flat. There's, there doesn't appear to be any gravings or markings on this. There's the wind flowing. Wind? Ooh. With your really terrible perception test, Zoom. Kinda, there's air down here. You kind of. Okay, good. I, I can breathe. <laughs> Tristan's really this good passive. <laughs> Chris does have a good passive, but does he have a good active perception? Why don't you give me a perception test, Tristan? Can I help him? He does not. You can make your own, <laughs> Valerie. Okay. Mm. It's not looking great, this guys. It's looking really good, guys. I'm not going to lie. Well, we have the torch. Uh, how so about... So which way is the torch blowing? How about... Oh, no. Oh, no. You, with your perception, you don't Damn know. Damn it. What about Moog or Rogar? Why don't, why don't you two give me a reception test? Let's see how um, bad this so, is. Gonna okay. Be. Oh boy. That's yep. Let's see if Rogar can save the day. Okay, that's, not, that's the you know you know. Highest five roll. people rolled highest rolls. That should, that should be passing. <laughs> what happens? This is active. Oh uh, shit! This is active. <laughs> this is active in the fact that um, Trist, you do notice. I'll say, Trist, you, and this is, I was going to give this to you. Trist, you do notice that there's a smell of the sea coming from the east. Rogar, mm. you having more um, more heightened, almost bestial senses uh, than you used to. Uh, as you, You're becoming more and more of a dragon. You see a, a glint of something, like a, a shiny object. For down the eastern corridor. However, you also see 
a trail of old dried blood that with your hunting skills, it looks like it's thicker to the east and then thins and it goes down the western corridor as if something was wounded and ran from there to the west. I was trying to... Uh, I will uh, uh, explain this to the group. I believe there is something running from this direction. There is a shiny bubble down that way. Glitter uh-huh. gold. Can I I'm probably gonna regret doing this. Oh oh really? We're gonna we're gonna tempt fate again? Sure why. It's gonna tempt fate? I mean <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. it is also a spyglass, right? Say it can see in the shiny? distance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, I, I mean, even if there's something. Now, shopping. it's pitch black in here. You do have 120 feet of dark vision because you're a drow. Right. Um, a torch. He does have the torch so that it would extend it a little bit further. Now, you're not going to be able to discern colors That's in, fine. in in the dark. You'll, you will just get kind of objects. And so. Movement. If there was movement, so Zune, you bring up the spyglass and you look towards the eastern chamber. Yeah. Very tentatively, kind of, and you can see in the distance. Um, you see shapes of uh, possibly they don't look like natural rock structures or anything like that. Not exactly sure what it is from this distance. You do see the outlines of shapes. You don't see any movement. You do see glittering something though. Something's shining over there. Does it look like a big shiny, like what we came here for? Or does it look like just uh, glitter, random glitter? More more on the random side. I will communicate what I see all the way down to the weird, not quite rocks. I don't know quite what it is. It doesn't look natural. I guess we can go west, and then yeah. if we find nothing, we can go back east. Sounds like a plan. And you're sure these aren't drag marks? These are just, this is someone running. It appears to be running. I don't see any smearing or anything like that. Okay. And that is where we're going. Okay, so you're going west? All right. Going west. All right. You begin to make a western approach um, as you head down the western tunnel. Um you start to feel a slight tremor in the ground. Subtle at first. You take a moment, you kind of, everyone kind of stops for a moment. Some bits of dirt kind of cascade from the roof, hit the floor, some of it dropping into the brackish water around you. And then you hear a horrible crushing noise as the dais beneath your feet begins to shift and move, begins to kind of move. Some of the planks begin to shatter that were making the the uh, the actual um, uh, walking distances between certain areas of this passageway. And as all of this takes place, I need all of you to give me dexterity saving throws. Oh, I was thinking ahead. Question. Yes. Feeling like, just in case anyone does terrible, can I like jump up and like swing them across somewhere? You we know will. Say? How about you roll your deck save, Velvry? <laughs> you I'm do have saying. advantage. I want to say that out loud before anything it's crazy fine. happens. Okay. Everybody rolled above a 10. It was not a hard check. Everybody's able to keep their footing easily enough. Valerie apparently jumps on the ceiling <laughs> and kind of like looking around oh, um, as the rest of you are like, oh, shit, kind of fumbling around for just a moment. And all of you see as the southern tunnel that you guys came out of collapses inwards, <laughs> sealing you in here, one might think. Doom. However, none of you slide off of the dais into the brackish water. And after a few moments, everything starts to quiet down. 
as you take stock of what's happening. There's still dust kind of flickering in the air. There's the sound of the subtle rumbling noise is coming further and further down the western approach, the tunnel you're moving towards. You probably already answered this, but is there writing on the dais? No, there is not. Okay. Is there writing anywhere? Uh, no, there is not. Not, 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 in, not in this chamber that you're in currently. Okay. Did we just trigger a trap? Yeah. There's only one direction to go. You can either go west or you can go east. Okay. The other one was still available. I guess we continue west. Yeah, the tunnel we came in collapsed behind us. Yeah. So we still have the other two ways. I keep hearing go west. No. Okay. Go west. Go west, young man. As you all begin moving westwards, you see... Westworld, um, that's a good show. The Most of the planks are very hard to maneuver. Some of them have completely fallen into the water. Assuming all of you are trying to avoid plunging into the brackish depths. Um, you're not exactly sure how deep this stuff is. There's no telling. It's hard. You can't see through it because of its viscosity. So taking your time, I'm assuming you're taking your time at least. You're able to kind of skip across some of these planks, making it down a long, longer tunnel to what appears to be another um, cylindrical room, uh, much like the one you just left. Well, is there brackish water in here as well? There is. It is I, a just, very I really setup. like hearing you say that. It is brackish, so, black, yeah, brackish the viscosity. water. Black, brackish, the viscosity. With viscosity. It's very um, vis- viscous. Viscous. Are there, are there any braziers? Uh, one might say moist. There are, it appears that at one point there might have been torches in these chambers. There are, there are holders to hold a torch, like a kind of similar to a brazier. Sconces. A sconce, there we go. That's what Lord I was looking for. There are sconces along some of the walls, but they are long, whatever was held on them is long gone at this point. Okay. Um, as you make it into the next, the next room, you the first thing that strikes you is that uh, despite the similarities I just described, the blood trail, the the subtle blood trail, begins to stop towards the center rogar. And at the center, you actually see a corpse lying in the middle of the dais. Murray's gonna take his torch, one of his torches. Uh, He's gonna light a second torch. Mm Mm-hmm. He's going to put one torch in one of these holders so he can kind of light okay. up the room a little bit. Right. Yeah, no problem. Um, and then he'll carefully start to move in closer towards the body. As you move in... And see, he's looking around as well. You know? Yeah. As you begin to look around, Rogar. As you do, you get closer to the body itself. And I mind you have a 30 feet blind sense. You, you know? do. I know. I know. I remember. Right, bro. Um, it is smelling smelling and may i might i'll probably just give you smell it's probably just smell um which might be difficult to smell through the brackish water oh it's like an infrared snake you know no it is not infrared snake it's not not. i thought it was predator style no it's not predator style i'm sorry it's not as you're moving forward you creep down low and you get close to the corpse this looks like a long dead hobgoblin when I say long dead, I mean like he's been dead, like he's like bones at this point. Um, appears to be wearing tattered remnants of some kind of cloth armor, maybe. And the strange thing is that lying next to him is a is a dagger that appears to be in one of his hands. Um, the dagger is smeared with what looks to be some kind of blackish stain across the uh, the actual blade itself. And the the skull is completely powdered, crushed. Uh, 
Um, yeah, that's what you'd get from that. Okay. Any kind of tracks close to it, or any kind of there are tracks signs of disturbance. Yeah, there are okay. in fact tracks. In fact, you pick up the similar blood, blood trail that looks like it had stopped. Actually, picks up, and there is there are two more branching paths from this room. One further north, and then one further west. And it looks like the blood trail leads to the north. Okay. Are we following the blood trail? That would be Moog's vote. Yes, to follow the blood. Sorry, we can vote. Okay. Usually know. the blood follows us. Let's follow the blood for once. Hmm. Um, the the blood on the knife. Mm-hmm. Um, is it more similar to? Is it more similar? Is it similar to the blood of those small creatures in Fort Dorona? Um, why don't you give me an Arcana check, Rogar? Oh, oh gee. You kind of look at it. Um, it's hard to tell. It's difficult okay. to tell. Uh, it's old, really old. Difficult to tell. Um, the dagger. Look at any 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 anything, anything unique about the dagger? Or is it just kind no. Of just dagger? It looks looks very plain. Very plain. Um, nothing nothing ornate or elaborate about it. Okay. No notes or anything on this guy's person or anything? Or... No, not that you see. Mm-mm. Okay. All right. Um, and nothing else special about this room? Simply a kind of dome room? Yep. Okay. I guess we're following the blood then. Okay. You keep following the blood as you travel now to the north. In the the next chamber, as you walk across the creaking boards once again, you do feel a slight grumbling just for a moment. Nothing appears to collapse and break around you. However, there is, appears to be uh, something moving around, or perhaps the earth itself is moving. Who knows exactly what's going on down here. But uh, something is amiss for sure. This is not usual behavior below ground. You come across what appears to be a um, a more well-preserved corpse lying towards the entrance of this next chamber. And it appears to be a goblin corpse. And you can tell because it still has the flesh on it. Um, you do also see a marking Trist. And by marking, I see as you kind of look it over, you have a very high passive investigation. You see that it is the goblin is missing its pinky finger. It looks healed over as if this is not a recent wound. The main cause of death looks to be a um, it looks like there are two daggers sticking out of his back. Um, they are, they appear to be made out of silver and Zoom would recognize them as drow daggers. Um, Very yeah. well made. And they are throwing daggers. Oh dear Lord, I'm definitely taking those. Oh, Zoom okay. reaches using. down and as you guys come across the corpse, Zoom reaches down and pulls the daggers out of the goblin's back. I mean, it'd be a waste, right? There are marks on the daggers themselves, Zoom, of what appears to be a spider web on the <sighs> hilt. And inside the spider web, there is almost like a um, almost like a dream catcher symbol. Okay. Mm-hmm. Does that mean anything? Can I roll to see if that means anything to me? Yeah, this is some type of turf war. Chris would recognize the symbol as that of Clan Dreamweaver. Oh. oh my. I'm assuming this. I'm assuming this fella here was a part of Giant's Bane. That was the one. 
But Tick took to cut his finger off. Yep. And you kind That's of what look. I thought. I thought we had met a pinkyless goblin before. And, yeah. You know, there's, it's at this point, you know, some of you might have noticed that Trist is missing a finger. <clears throat> so, what do we know about the Dreamweaver clan? None of you know one. much. Maybe Trist might know a little bit. Zoom, you might know a little bit. We'll see. Mm-hmm. You, have to you want to make a history it. check? Nope. I don't know anything about this. Nope. No, nothing. Really Does nice. this goblin have a face? Does he still have his head? Yes. Yeah. Um, one more important thing as you guys are kind of looking this over. Um, Rogar. Seeing the angle of the insertion of the blades in its back, um, you kind of follow and you see a second corpse nestled away behind some fallen rubble. A uh, much larger corpse. It appears to be a drow wearing black leathers. Take that. Soon just we'll appears to be a barge. He's actually, or he's actually kind of a thief. Uh, Rogar will come over. Mm-hmm. Um, does he look about the same state as the goblin, as far as like decay? Yeah, unlike the goblin, it looked to be about the same kind of decomposition. Um, unlike the goblin, however, the drow appears to not have any visible wounds that you can see. Um, there does appear to be a strange look of shock on his face. Um, eyes are wide, like wide, wide, freakishly wide, and almost like his eyeballs have kind of popped out of the socket slightly. And there's a strange pallor about him. Um, there's also is this kind of waxy um, resin across some of his body, and including his his, his armor, his leather armors, and this kind of uh, black cloak that he's wearing. In like a death grip, he has a large katana blade that has kind of a purplish sheen to the metal. seen this in the blade before. You have. This is a dream blade. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Rogar is immediately looking up um, the ceilings um, mm-hmm. uh, around this room. You start see looking. You, see anything. you start looking around. You don't see anything. Um, in fact, um, you can only re- the, the brackish water kind of ends Back in the tunnel you just walked through, there is no visible water inside of this area. Um, and it appears to dead end. Well, what looks to be like there might have been further passages out of this area have been collapsed at some point. Okay. Don't see anything so else. This is dead end. Yes, it is. All right. Um. <laughs> just. Start to look through it, soon. Yes, I mean, just curious, like, okay, that's Very weird. tentatively, put it up dry, look around. I don't see anything out of the normal, as of yet. Okay. Uh, we'll 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 take the, uh, the sword, the dream blade. Okay. From the drow. Mm-hmm. Uh, does he have anything else on this person? Mm-hmm. You guys want to search him? Yeah. Rover will search him. Both yeah. of them. Okay. Why don't you guys give me investigation checks? One killed the other one. One very good. Eight. <laughs> mm. Okay. Okay. So, I'll say that. Um, yeah. Why not? Why not? Everybody's looking. Um, between Rogar and and Trist, um, we'll say Trist. You probably covered the goblin since you're kind of mm-hmm. over there when Rogar moved over to what appears to be a Dreamweaver assassin. Um. Trist, as you're looking over the goblin, you can tell that his hands are stained um, with a uh, kind of like a blackish resin 
as if he was working with some kind of material, perhaps. Um, other than that, you don't find anything else really of note on his person. You do notate the missing finger, probably do denotating him as a member of Clan Giant's Blood. Um, Rogar, looking over the assassin, you in fact find three vials of what Zune would be able to identify as drow poison. Mm. Yeah. I mean, and you do find that's two. That's the good stuff. You find two yeah. more throwing <laughs> daggers. Oh my. Drow made, of course. Very I'm lightweight. Set. I mean, do they all seem to be from the same set? Does it look like, I mean. Oh, yeah. Is, <laughs> this is I my daddy mean, set of throwing daggers, <laughs> you know? I just mean, like, is it common for them to have, you know, four daggers on hand, or is it this is there's obviously, possible there's another one? This is obviously somewhere. an assassin of some kind. He um, Would you say he's well in drought? <laughs> that hurts, but okay. I'll, I like it. I hate it, but I like it. Um, so there's not like it, it's unlikely that there would be two in here and one's just running around. This is obviously all this one guy's stuff. Yes, as far okay. as you can tell. <laughs> yeah, I'll be taking all that. Okay, okay. Five drow daggers. Got yes. it. There is the the moon blade, which is a katana. Long sword, dream blade. Excuse me. Um, whoever wants that. But um, as you collect all of these items, die you will yes, love it. Die you will love it. Rogar, Rogar. Uh, Rogar can uh, take two. Well, he'll, mm. Rogar has the dream blade, but if someone wants it, he's more than willing to give it. To and what's it? Him. What does it qualify as, Anthony? It's a long sword. Oh. Yeah. Can I? I can do that, right? I think. I think it counts as magical. Yes, but that's it, doesn't it? It is magical. Yeah. It does have. I would some take. I would take a dream sword. Yeah, it yeah. can cast a spell type of thing. Kind of. If, uh, can anyone yeah. else use it? If, I mean, if you, I don't think I, so. I'll, I'll take it. Yep. Yeah, go for no. it. Is that in the inventory there, buddy? <sighs> yep, dream blades in there. Here, Robert, I'll hand it to you. Thank you, Robert. <clears throat> Got a nice shiny katana. Yeah. Uh, Gonna yeah. Throw that hammer away. Uh, My... Roger is gonna leave... <laughs> Roger's gonna give the vials of poison to uh, Moog as well. Ooh, um... yes. Ooh, I can tip my arrows. Can mm. nice. Curious. A, what... a single a single vial can coat three pieces of ammunition. And you, don't we do that like an hour before because oh, no. it doesn't uh, last um, or it doesn't only, last. It lasts a minute. Right, right, okay. So yeah. yeah. <clears throat> You can place them up as an action, right? You can mm -hmm. dose them as an action. Which direction is the guy looking? The drow? Yeah. He's looking in horror back at the tunnel entrance you guys just came through. Oh, great. Okay. Okay. He still so has his, head. his face and everything. Yes. Yes, he does. I mean, I can talk to him. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Would you like to begin the ritual? As Tristan will pull out his matches and strike up his incense, hold it in front of the drow's face. Are you casting a spell or are you doing the ritual? Yeah, this will, we're, we're going to ritual it. Okay. All right. So it's going to take a little bit extra time. Mm -hmm. um, and I need you to give me a spell casting ability check. So just roll your intelligence. Just my just an intelligence check. Yeah, intelligence check. Yeah, because that's your that's your your spell casting ability. Fifteen. Fifteen. More than enough. As you take some time and and, and looking at the actual ritual detailed in the your spell book, the journal mm -hmm. that you read from, mm -hmm. you place out some of the more esoteric artifacts and channel some of the more innate. Um, time-shifting magic that you have used before. And as you do so, once again, the face of the drow begins to liven and reanimate as if perhaps time was rewound for just a brief moment on this creature's um, kind of head area. As he 
comes to consciousness. You have five questions. <laughs> Why'd you kill that goblin? Hired to kill everyone in the cave. Oh, what killed you? Didn't see it. Can I roll insight on his response? Are they allowed to lie? They can, they... Just, they can, they can do whatever they want. Yeah, they don't have to necessarily be truthful. You can roll an insight check if you'd like. Yeah, just for funsies. Yay. Probably not going to do well, but no. Nope. He's probably telling it's the funny. truth. I mean, it's a dead body speaking right now. It's it's super yeah. unnerving. Yeah, that's fine. That's two questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do I have a third? Yeah, I'm, just, I'm trying to think if this question is going to just reiterate the first one that he answered with. Why were you sent down here? The boss didn't like the moving in on our territory. That's three. What else is down here? I'm not sure. Something old. Something strange. The fifth question is up for anyone. Anyone can ask this one. Because I'm out. Unless no one has it. Anyone? I mean, this lasts for like two minutes, right? Yeah, it's just kind of like, sitting okay. here. He's kind of animated. Oh. Kill me! <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> this is absolute torture! Just one minute, please. <laughs> Give me one just more let minute. Me, let me think. Just what? Stop breathing like that. It's really Mad crazy. madam, if you don't mind, just one more question. <laughs> well. Do we wanna ask if it's it I'm sorry, if he has seen what we're after? Where the best path might be to get to that? I mean I don't know. Yeah. Have you seen a glowing rock down here? That's what we're, that's what I was sent to secure. You can find it deep in the old parts. And as that answer fades from his lips, he no. goes back to know, dead. At least we know the rock is still down here. Assuming he's not lying, but yeah. No telling. It's obviously protected by something. Hmm. Well, how bad can it be? How bad indeed. I guess we have to go back to where we came, right? Okay. So you go back to the previous room. Um, you have, you went north, so you have the options of going east, where you came from before that, or going west into the unknown. Farther west? I guess further west. Okay. Farther west. And we know what's east is the shiny bobble. Yes. As bobble, you bobble, bobble. Take yet another path to the west. This time, as you move across bobble, the bobble. rotting planks, oh. one of them slightly gives way. Rogar's foot dips into the water for just a moment, pulling it back out. All right. But is it brackish water? <laughs> it is brackish. Nice. And you <laughs> kind of shake it for a moment and then proceed forward. 
Instead of a metal dais, Rogar, you see that you are now in a stone floor, carved stone floor. There are um, troughs of the water in strange patterns about the floor itself. And you're in a very, very big room. Um, you can barely see the edges of the uh, of the cavernish room that you're in. It looks old, um, much older than anything else you've seen thus far. Um, and very well crafted. Different kind of um, stonework went into this. This is this is a rock dais. Yes, as far and it's it's massive, very very big. Right, rock me on a dais. God damn it! <laughs> as <laughs> you see this <laughs> at the far end of the chamber, the very very far end of the chamber, you see a well. There's several things you see in this. First off, the very far end, you see a large statue. Um, it's, it appears to be maybe 20, 30 feet tall at the, at the far end of the chamber. It is slightly illuminated despite there be, being in complete darkness by a almost blue glowing phosphorescent, um, rock that are just kind of like placed all around it and giving it this strange kind of ethereal glow. The statue appears to be of some kind of toad-like creature. It's it's very big. Um, instead of, but instead it's it's kind of like hunched over, sit in a sitting position. And you can see it's very detailed um, all the way up to its large, large mouth. And the most bizarre thing about it is there's a stalk that comes off the top of its head where there are three eyeballs affixed to the top of its head. So it's not a bandersnatch. Bandersnatch. He <laughs> said it's toad-like? Very much. It looks toad-like in nature. Without getting closer, you can't see out any more details. Let's not get closer. Can... Is... Mm. Is our path directly behind it? Is there more path out of here? No, it appears to be that appears to be the edge of the room. This is a very massive chamber, and the troughs of water range from uh, two to three feet in width, and they kind of break up this dais all the way to big sections where it's 10, 15 feet across, a large, large, almost like pools that open up, and it's just a if you were looking from above, it might make some kind of picture or something of the sort. But sitting here down on the level looking at it, it's just like a strange, um, a strange breaking up of this kind of like stone dais into uh, little, little bra black, brackish, black streams and ponds. Mm. One further detail to the right of you are these large sacks. They appear to be um, between six to eight feet in length, and they're, they're, they're big, and they look fleshy, almost like meat. And there are 15 of them, probably kind of stacked all next to each other. Oh my God, don't we ever bring TNT to us? I have a feeling we don't want to be in this room. Yeah. And backing up, backing up, backing up, backing up. I, I'm, oh God, I'm going to hate this. So how far away is that toad? And how big is the toad? Is it like double the size of the Bandersnatch thing? Oh, I mean, it's like 20 feet tall. And is this, it is a statue. It does okay. appear to be a stone okay, statue. Sorry. All right. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's a statue. All right. Shit. Mm. It is, uh, for all intents and purposes, it is 120 feet away from you. 
Okay. And the meat sacks, they're like right next to us. They're, they're pretty close, probably within 20, 30 feet of you. Does it look like there's someone or something inside them? Do they look like stomachs? Are you going to get close to them? I do not want to get close to them. Um, can I pull up a spyglass and just have a look? <laughs> Does anybody <laughs> want to investigate the meat sacks? <laughs> Hell no. Oh. <laughs> can I just... The spyglass has a distance, right? I mean, I can look. I can look through it. It's an I mean, you can. Glass. You can. Do they look similar? Do they look similar to the uh, eggs that we've seen before in the uh, tunnels? No, they do not. They don't appear to yeah. resemble the same color or anything like that. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to try to see some details in the uh, toad through the spyglass. Uh, the toad itself. The toad itself. Okay. Um, if you're looking at the actual toad itself, you'd see that. Um, while it's kind of has like its two kind of large toad-like paws in its front, it's kind of like front mm-hmm. arms on the ground, there appears to be another set of appendages coming off of its side. Mm-hmm. And instead of them ending in uh, a toad-like hand, they end, it's like a long, two long tentacles that are kind of on the ground wrapping, and then they kind of wrap around the arms themselves. Um, and then it appears to have another set of... Uh, of normal like toad feet legs that it's kind of uh, hunched down on in the sitting position great so nothing appears to be in its mouth it's definitely made of stone and nothing crazy with the eyes they're just stone three big eyes and we're talking on stalk it's like one stalk with three eyeballs ah do they look like they are looking at me through the spyglass um, they're stone, so they have no iris, but they okay. do appear to be looking in the direction uh, that you guys are standing, yes. Is there anything on the ceiling? As you look up at the ceiling, um, Rogar, you've seen this before. There is, in fact, a mosaic on the ceiling. Uh, the mosaic um, appears to be and what what is interesting is it appears that the brackish water is flowing from the kind of troughs around the edge of this dais and flowing up and around the sides of the cavern and then towards the mosaic itself, coating it in a, a, a layer of almost slime, but you can still make out some details of the mosaic itself. And it looks to be a landscape of a cyclopean city of black towers and vistas and there is uh while it is covered in this gobs and goops there are cracks inside of it uh cracks inside the mosaic itself as it's kind of cracked and and whatnot and there is a a woman a a beautiful um almost matronly like figure that appears to be trying to almost drown the landscape with a large Voss on her shoulder. And you would probably recognize her as a um, representation of the goddess Boel. But the cracks have defaced her as well as many of the other aspects of the mosaic itself. We cannot leave these sacks here. They pose a threat to the town. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is true. Kristen gonna, will investigate one. You go to investigate the sacks. Um, are right you serious? I mean, <laughs> I don't. Sounds nothing, like the nothing best good ever comes from it. But you move. Why don't towards, you touch the doorknob again, Tris? You move towards the meat sacks. <sighs> Rogar's um, going with him. Rogar's going with you. Uh, I feel like this is just going to kick something off that needs to get kicked off. Moog, Valray, and Zune are kind of hanging back as you go to look at the. Meat oh, Moog's pointing. Moog is pointing. Pointing the crossbow crossbows towards it at the damn meat sacks. Yes. yes. Yeah. I'm going to throw some bardic inspiration on Trist and Rogar okay. in the time before we they go over there. All right, yeah. that's fair. That's fair. There we go. Um, Trist, give me a investigation check real fast. And we're probably going to close it out soon. Was <laughs> Rogar helping <laughs> or no? Yeah, Rogar. Yeah, we'll say he's helping. Oh, 
Oh, those are terrible. You do have your Bardic Inspiration? I do. Uh, it's a D8. I think so. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it is. I think that's a D8. So, 16. 16. 16 total with a 16 as you're kind of looking them over, Trist. First off, um, one of them looks slightly newer than the rest. Um, actually, three of them look slightly newer than the rest. The older ones look um, modeled, almost like they are beginning to calcify. However, the newer ones, um, they look like pinkish, fleshy, and slightly transparent. As you see the slowly digesting face of a hobgoblin in a look of horror, as he's like, and there's like pieces of his like skin and muscle exposed where it's being eaten away inside of this sack. Um, it's slightly horrifying. One might say worthy of a sanity check, but we won't do that yet. Because in addition to that trust, you do see next to him, um, nearby these fleshy sacks, there's actually a crack in the wall. And you instinctively kind of, as you're doing this investigation, you look over and you see a corpse of someone in the the crack in the wall as if someone has crawled their way in to the uh, the wall itself, um, wearing the vestments of a, what it appears to be a priest or priestess of Boel. And laying at their feet are two, for all intents and purposes, um, glass jars that have strange, well, not really say strange, they have what appears to be electricity um, moving about the inside of the jars themselves, which very easily, as you come over to investigate this, you, you spot them immediately. And as you look at them, and you're starting to kind of put some things together, what's going on here? Not exactly sure. And as you look around, you hear a little bit of a rumble once again. And that's where we're going to end tonight's episode. <laughs> Whispers from the stars. Ah. <laughs> 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 Sorry, took a little bit long. Pew, 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 pew. Towards the end there. It happens, it happens. Um, but let's do it's favorite it. moments for the night. <clears throat> Start with Rogar. Ooh, gosh. Uh, I guess probably my favorite moment uh, was probably all the looking through the spyglass uh, on their heads uh, this episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. You know, why not? You know, go for it. And yeah, why not? Why like nothing it. bad's gonna happen? Nothing oh, bad's like happened so far. No, yeah, of course not. <laughs> um, Ugh. let's go to Zoom then. Favorite moments? I think you know my favorite moment. Um, the spyglass. No, it was definitely Con. That was Con. probably my favorite. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that Con score, man. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Check mark. He's not going to forget that. I'm just oh, going to come not, back and just. That. I'm going to keep him in check. Oh God! And you can enthrall <laughs> people without using spells when you're a bard. So keep him tied up in his in your room. <laughs> it's messed up. <laughs> Willingly, I'm not going to not against his will. He's going to want to be there. But anyway, that's yep. it. Yep. Dan, I'm surprised you didn't make a, a con joke. You know, all of a sudden you oh. hear. Oh, no, I was, I was holding back. I was <gasps> like, con! You know, it was there. It was totally there. You know? That's respect, you know, just respect, you know. Speaking of Dan, Mo, yeah, the, favorite moments of the night? I really did enjoy Sexy Time with Zoom. Mm-hmm. That was pretty fun. Um, just because it's, it's, why not? I mean, Man, why not? the entire game, why not? Um, and uh, uh, the uh, the journey to where we are now, the just getting through the uh, the caverns and all of that was kind of fun, actually. Uh, but yeah, sexy time with Zoom, mm. and 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 you know, pillow talk with Trist. Mm, pillow talk, yeah, That's good pillow talk. <laughs> Gotta throw that out there. How about favorite moments for Tristan Varel? That was the pillow talk with Mo was my favorite moment. <laughs> Of course it was. Of course it was. 
Um, we lost Valerie. There's, just, okay there's just a couple of gossiping gals, you know, yeah, gossiping, just gossiping gals, about yeah. the party. Just, just talking, talking about some life. people, you know, yeah. Girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boys. You Boys. Know, the, the works. Yeah, exactly. Um, if I had a favorite moment, I'm pretty sure it was somebody looking at my meat sack. That came out wrong. Or did it? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> did it? <laughs> or did it? Do you but, do you often do you often like get people to to choose uh, to, to investigate your meat sack? Investigate your meat sack. Meat sack. Mm. I don't know if I should answer. You guys want to guys want to take a look at the uh, meat sack? Or look, uh, <laughs> you want to leave that one alone? <laughs> but um, unfortunately, that's gonna be it, guys. So thank you everybody for watching. Do make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Um, make sure to check out Velry's TikTok. Velry the Barbarian. Velry the Barbarian. Underscore Barbarian. Yeah. Moog, Mr. Dan here is running some, t- not TikTok, some Twitter. Twitter. I, I Twitter. Yeah. Twitter. Emberfell D and D at Emberfell D and D. Running some Twitter, some Twitter yeah. stuff. We got stuff going on. We got lots of things happening. So go ahead and check all those out. There will be links in the description. I mean, and, we have we do have our very own memologist, uh, Andrea as mm-hmm. Zoon. Uh, mm-hmm. So if you're following the show <laughs> here, definitely follow Memologist. on the Twitter, and then that's memes where you'll see the memes. That's yeah, where exactly. we'll, we'll meme it up. How you have to They're do being that shared. Here that's great. Yeah. <laughs> the whole world's going to see them. Yeah. The whole world. All four Enjoy. of them. <laughs> yeah. All four. Yeah. You have to do some more now. Yeah. But um, awesome, awesome game, guys. Uh, thank you, everybody out there, for watching. And we will, of course, see you guys in the next one. Have a good night. Good night.